Hey guys and welcome to Vegan Beauty Girl. Today I am doing a Holland and Barrett haul. Holland and Barrett have got this brand new sustainable store in Chelmsford which is like a first of its kind. That's really exciting. It's very focused on wellness and there was a lot of sustainability woven into like the building of the store. They said they'd send me over more details on that but they haven't so I'll put that in a blog post I guess or I'll put it in the description down below because I think it'd be more interesting to see it there anyway. A lot's been taken into account when building the store in regards to sustainability and also there's been a big like focus on wellness there's also been a big focus on beauty which is probably why I got invited in the first place. Hond and Barrett have always had quite a high bar for beauty products they'd sell in their store they've always been like very strict on it having like kind of cleaner ingredients and being environmentally friendly stuff like avoiding microplastics they're actually the first retailer to ban face wipes as well and the first retailer I think to ban plastic bags yeah Hond and Barrett have just always been quite ethical when it comes to like sustainability and quality of ingredients used both for like the health of the user and also for the environment so they did give me a hundred pounds spend in their store i didn't spend quite 100 pounds in their store i spent like 75 pounds in their store so that was really cool and yeah i'm gonna pretty much do my holland and barrett haul for you guys now i know what you're thinking 75 pounds i should have a lot to show for it but no holland and barrett is quite expensive i have enough to show for it obviously stuff like the beauty products is just quite expensive i've actually got the receipt with me i feel like It'll be helpful to tell you the price of everything. Also, I thought it would help me keep track of what I bought. I meant to film this right after I bought everything, but it's now like four days afterwards. So I would have forgotten. I would have started using stuff. The only thing that's really pushed me to make this video is the fact that I want to eat the crisps I bought. First up, I bought this Q&A Hyaluronic Acid. I've seen Cruelty Free Becky talk highly about this brand, so I was quite excited to see them in there. They're similar to The Ordinary, but I don't know if you guys know, but The Ordinary kind of are partially owned by Estee Lauder or Estee Lauder own like a third of their shares or I'm gonna put the exact details on that on the screen right now so that you guys know what the fact is. But yeah, because Estee Lauder is involved in The Ordinary and I don't support Estee Lauder because they're not cruelty free, I like to not support The Ordinary, which is difficult because I know some people would consider them cruelty free, but personally it's not something that I'm comfortable with. So I don't support them. And I've heard Q&A are a very similar brand, but they are like Estee Lauder free just a bit more cruelty free to me. I also found Face Fairy quite similar and I've enjoyed the Face Fairy products I've used. But yeah, I'm hoping these are good too. And I've also recently run out of hyaluronic acid and I find that I've had a drier face from it. So I do need that like extra hydration in my routine. So I was glad to be able to pick up a replacement. And I found it really interesting that on the side of their product, they have a checklist. So it says, how does it help? And it's ticked anti-aging, calming, soothing, skin firmness and hydration. And I can see that pore minimizing isn't ticked, which is fine, I have another product for pore minimizing and it also takes what skin types this is suitable for and this is actually suitable for all skin types whether that's oily stress dry sensitive normal or combination i'd say my skin type is pretty much combination and sensitive if you want to actually see my full skincare routine one which really works really well for my skin type then i've got a video which you can check out it actually has am and pm all in under 10 minutes which i think is super helpful i've only used this a couple of times so far so yeah i'll keep you guys updated with any thoughts i have on it i have seen this in holland and barrett stores before I know the one in Chertsey where I was living for like the majority of lockdown had Q&A in them so you might be able to find this in your local Holland and Barrett store but I did find that a lot of the brands I saw in this like brand new Chelmsford wellness store were new brands like brands I hadn't seen in Holland and Barrett's before so it was really exciting to see some new ones but yeah I am excited to finally be trying out the Q&A range even if it's just one product for now and this only cost me £6.50. Okay next on the list we have flux undies these are period pants so i have been interested in period pants for quite a while and i ended up going for size large which was like size 14 i'm typically like 12 14 anyway i'm particularly on the bottom half i'm normally 14. as far as the fit goes it's really like loose around the waistband maybe a bit too loose i don't think i'd enjoy wearing them out but around the thighs i found it i find the pants really quite tight and i feel like that is going to lead to like irritation and ingrown hair around there and i do not not want that i'm gonna i don't know i'm even tempted to kind of like cut the fabric there just to make it a little bit looser because i'm not really planning on wearing these to impress anyone so i don't mind that i just rather it fit properly i don't want it to irritate my skin it's just so sensitive around there it wouldn't really damage the product and since it would still work yeah actually do you know what if you don't know what period underwear is basically these knickers can hold up to four tampons worth of blood like for me i would envision myself wearing them like in the evenings i'd rather just not wear a menstrual cup but like you only get one pair, so you can only do that like one evening. So maybe I'd leave it on like the days when I'm a bit lighter so I can just, so I can just like wear them. Cause I really hate having like anything 
in if I'm on a really light day. I don't know, it's interesting, I'm not really sure. I guess I'll try it out once and then if I really like them, I'll have to buy them again. But these did cost, these did cost 27.99, so nearly 30 pounds. So if you want like enough for like four or five nights, that's a lot of money you'll be spending on period underwear. This has no synthetic fragrances, it's paraben free, vegan, naturally antibacterial, eco-friendly, sustainably sourced, reusable and washable, cool to bring it and it gives back. I don't know, I find it very interesting. I actually don't really know like anyone in real life who has used these. I've seen like influencers talk about them, but it's always a bit more handy to know someone like in real life who's used period underwear, especially if they use it regularly and get their feedback on it. I'm curious to see how I find it. It is frustrating that you'll really have to invest in it. Here they are. They're like big, big underwears. I got the bikini shorts. These were the only ones they had in store, but it has kind of like lace detail here. This bit basically just feels like a massive period pad built into your underwear. It starts here kind of like towards the bum and then cuts off around the front. But yeah, they feel very heavy. I feel like it's not really something you ever want someone to find in your underwear drawer. It's around here that I find it just a little bit tight. I don't normally wear underwear like this. Basically, I'm normally someone who wears thongs. I find them really comfortable. I like like as little fabric as possible so this is a bit of a change for me so i think i will do a big review of these so i've just finished my period so it's going to be a good month until i get a chance to wear these but after my first cycle maybe my first two cycles when i've gotten a bit more used to them i will give you guys a review and let you know kind of whether or not i think they're worth the money but yeah my first impression of it is it is actually reasonably comfortable it's just that i'm one i'm not used to wearing underwear like this so that's probably why i find it a bit uncomfortable but it definitely is a bit tight around the thighs but that's just my body right it might be different for you we don't know ultimately it's Still got a bit of lace it's still black i still think it can be quite cute and it is a lot more environmentally friendly than wearing a pad possibly even cuter than wearing a big pad with your underwear it seems like it would fit better like you don't have to worry about it getting a bit like skew with yeah really interested in trying them out basically so i was excited to spend like a big bulk of my money on those so this isn't just like a beauty haul i'm afraid i do love hans and barrett for food and these crisps are some of my favourites to stack on. I actually used to get these quite a lot when I worked in London. I used to get these on my way into work as my like 11 Z snack. They are 89 pence each. I got two packets because I love them so much. These are just the best cheese and onion vegan crisps you can find and they're in Hondon Barrett. It's called The Story of When the Cheese Met the Onion and it's by 10 Acre Crisps and they do like lots of different crisps but this is the best flavour. I spent money on these and I really want to eat them but I haven't been able to because we've been doing this haul. So now I can snack on them. What else did I get? So most of the brands in on the Merit were familiar to me because obviously I spend a lot of time looking at vegan beauty products. But this one I had never seen before and it's called Hannah Silito. And apparently the lady that founded this went on Dragon's Den, so it's another brand like that. I have to say, I was just very attracted to the sunflower. Sunflowers are my favorite flower. That's why I've got like, got a tattoo. I just love them, they're my fave. So I was originally drawn to them because of that. However, when I was taking a closer look at the products, I typically avoid fragrance in my skincare and my skin majorly improved basically when I avoid fragrance. This product does have parfum in it, but it's like asterisk and then says declarable allergen free fragrance so if a product uses allergen free fragrance number one it highlights to me that it's really made for sensitive skin and number two it just helps highlight that it's a fragrance which is suitable for sensitive skin whereas most fragrances do irritate so this is a soothing spray for irritated itchy skin i pretty much got this kind of deal with stuff like razor rash or just any irritation. I think I'm gonna use it on both my face and my body. I'll let you know how I get on with it, but I think I'm gonna love this product. I actually am really keen to see more from their range, particularly just because they are formulated for people who have sensitive skin and are easily irritated by fragrance. So it sounds like a lot of their products would suit me. Plus they're really pretty. But this was another expensive item. This one cost 28 pounds. It's a brand I'm really excited about and I am keen to see more about them and learn a bit more about them because it was a brand new brand for me. Next up, another food item. I got this Man In Life peanut butter. I would say this is the best peanut butter. It's deep roast crunchy. And apparently I got told at the store that this was actually created by accident. They accidentally like deep roasted the nuts. I don't think they intended to, to avoid waste. They just made it into peanut butter and then it tasted delicious. And they kept that as the recipe and that really made them stand out. And it is so good. I actually got my dad a tub of this for Christmas and he absolutely loved it. This is a great present for anyone that if you struggle buying for men and you know men who like peanut butter, this is a great present. It is palm oil free, has no added sugar, 
and it recommends you stir it up um, and I guess it's because like most natural peanut butters they get really dry towards the bottom because they're really oily at the top. I guess the oil rises and the nuts fall so yeah just make sure you give it a stir to keep that balanced. Normally for me though I like the oily stuff up top and use that on toast and then find a way to use the kind of like drier layer at the bottom in a different way because I do really love that oily layer and how easy it is to drizzle on stuff. But yeah this peanut butter is delicious and it's vegan. I don't know if you guys know but like pretty much every peanut butter is vegan. When I first went vegan like 13 years ago <laughs> I didn't realize that regular peanut butter was vegan because obviously it's called peanut butter and I'm like oh I can't have butter so I spent forever buying those like massive of Meridian 5k tabs because like there are so many peanut butters on the market now which are like natural but there weren't back in the day and we just had to buy the massive tabs from Hans and Barrett for me to have peanut butter and then like eventually I realized some pat was actually suitable for vegans and pretty much every peanut butter was and I was like oh so I've just been buying 100% peanut peanut butter for no reason but you know it's healthier for you and it does taste good but me and my mum both felt kind of foolish when we finally realized which is probably like five years in or something ridiculous so please let me know if this is a revelation for you as well and then i also got myself a kombucha this one is by lobro i really liked it it's passion fruit it's kombucha which is good for your gut i do actually want to look into gut health a bit more because people always talk so highly about how actually eating for their biome has like changed their life so I've got this. I also bought some sauerkraut recently, so I'm gonna be super healthy soon. Yeah, I've already drunk that. This has actually been in my room for like, how many days? When did I go? Thursday, so it's been Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's been in my room for like four days, empty, just so I could film it right here, right now. It's a very nice kombucha. I recommend those. Although I would say my favorite kombuchas are always the ones with ginger in. I felt like because I wasn't paying for it because Hans and Barrett gave me vouchers, I was like, I'll try a new flavor. But I think I'll go back to having one with ginger in it because I feel like kombucha's got that like really strong taste and I feel like I need ginger to kind of like distract me from it. Cause it doesn't taste that great. If it weren't healthy, I wouldn't be drinking it. And I, I imagine we all feel the same way on that. So last off, I spent £5.98 on 140 grams of chocolate. This is my favourite chocolate though. This is the Raw Halo Milk and Pink Himalayan Salt. It is raw organic chocolate. It has like a little bit of Himalayan salt in it. So I really like that combination. And it's also ethically grown organic cacao, which I think is really important. I'm trying to make sure that when I buy chocolate, because let's be honest, it is a luxury item. I'm trying to make sure that I am buying like ethically grown or fair trade. And I try and do that with coffee as well, bananas. Um, just anything which you can find reasonably commonly fair trade, I try and make sure I do actively try and do that. I haven't like been really, really actively looking, but if anyone has a really good fair trade or ethically sourced hot chocolate, I'd be really keen to hear more about that. And one which is preferably a powder because I don't like the ones where you have to stir it in a saucepan and melt it because I live a busy life and I can't be doing that. I just really recommend this chocolate. When you're next in Holland and Barrett and you're feeling a little bit bougie and like you can afford to treat yourself and spend that money on chocolate, I really recommend these. So that is kind of it for my haul. However, they did recently launch a new skincare range, an own brand sort of skincare range, which is called Vita Skin, but this is a Holland and Barrett range. They did ask me if I want to try out some of their products and I sent them a list of products of theirs which I would like to try out. They basically have a vitamin A range and a vitamin C range and the vitamin A products were a bit more suited to what I like in skincare. So I asked to try some of those out and a couple of like vitamin C ones but they just sent me the whole vitamin C range and I sent them an email back and I haven't got a response. I did find that quite frustrating like obviously you guys know I care about sustainability so I'm very strict when it comes to accepting gifted items so I did find it very frustrating when I laid out like I would be happy to try out like these five products and they sent me seven products knowing two of them were off my list so I gave the rest to my friend Kim but I did keep the collagen boosting serum and the anti-pollution glow day cream and the range is 100% vegan it's also cruelty free I ask those sort of questions and I don't know if it's just the vitamin c range but it smells like a lot of orange and as I've already discussed I'm very sensitive to fragrance so I did use these like one day but it was right around my period, but still my skin flared up. So I'm very hesitant about using these again. Like there are a number of things that could have flared up my skin, but I'm also just very hesitant about anything that is hugely fragrant. All in all, I don't think this range is necessarily for me. I am still keen to try one or two products from the vitamin A range, but I also think they're reasonably affordable for the products and they look really nice and fancy. So if they do kind of sound like they'd suit your skin needs, I think that's definitely a range to try out. It's called Vita Skin and you'll probably find them on offer a lot in Hans and Barrett if it's their own brand products. They'll probably be like buy one get one half price or in the penny sale. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my haul side of this video, but I thought it'd be quite interesting to give you guys a bit more information about the new wellness store in Chelmsford. It's kind of like a trial store. So if the things they've done there end up being really successful, then they'll roll those stores out a bit more commonly across the UK. Fingers crossed they do because I did 
I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was better than the standard Holland and Barrett store. So I've made a few notes on what was different. First thing that was really interesting about the shop is that they had temperature checking on entry. That meant that it would flag if you had a temperature, which implied that you were ill, which is quite important in the middle of a pandemic. Fortunately, when I went through, my temperature was fine. So that's good news. I'd like to see this in more stores. And when I posted it to my story, someone replied saying like, this has been common in Thailand for like months now. And they were really surprised to see me being like, oh, look at this, isn't this fancy? And I imagine they were just like, what is going on with the UK? So they say that the store has an aim to make wellness successful, and I definitely can see what they're doing there. While still Holland and Barrett, I would say, is a bit more of an expensive store, so when it comes to talking about it being accessible, there is a bit of a like, Anyone who is really like stuck on a budget would really struggle to shop in Honda Barrett because it is more expensive than your regular place. However, for health food, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's extortionate, basically. One thing that they do to make wellness a bit more accessible is that you can book yourself in for a personal consultation with like a beauty specialist, a fitness specialist, and a health specialist. So say you had any issues with like your skincare, say you're like, I actually want to talk to someone because I've got these issues, can you help me? And they'll help you shop for products that suit your skin concerns or similarly like if you're like I've just gone vegan can you help me out or like I'm actually having a lot of gut issues these are my problems can you help me out or anything really so you can book in for these consultations they had like a little private room where you could talk to someone in HQ or you could talk to someone on the floor and they'll be able to help you they would be trained to help you and to have that consultation free is really helpful like that's that's quite that's quite special so I like that they do that but they also stock some on-trend products such as gut microbiome tests and DNA diagnostic kits they also had like kind of like bespoke supplement sets and there was one which was for vegans, which I thought was really interesting. So it had stuff like B12 and vitamin D. Whilst we're doing this Hond and Barrett haul, I actually use these vitamins. I'm meant to take them every day. They're just like the Holland and Barrett vegan vitamin. These ones are formulated for vegans. They have them in Holland and Barrett. They're often in buy one, get one half price. I mean, it's important for everyone to take their vitamins regardless of whether or not they're vegan, but yeah, just make sure you do. What was also really interesting about the store is that they had all the beauty products in the front and all the food was in the back. So it shows that they're putting kind of like a bit more of a priority on beauty. Maybe they're understanding that's drawing a lot of people in. I know that they've been expanding their beauty selection because vegan beauty is really hit off and they're making a lot of sales in that space and not just vegan beauty but also sustainable beauty whether or not that's using stuff that's plastic free like they have the etique range in there i don't know if you guys have ever seen like health food pick and mix in Holland and barracks but this one instead of having that pick and mix they had a refill station so it was something that was a bit more hygienic but still offered the same sort of service i think that'd be cool if more Holland and barracks offered refills on some standard stuff so yeah i had a really lovely trip to Holland and barrett in chelmsford and i hope to see a lot of what i saw there roll out across Holland and barracks nationwide I I guess they will be doing it as a bit of a trial, see what sells, see what gets engagement interaction. I took a lot of photos when I was there and basically I just want to go through them and see if there's anything else I really want to talk to you guys about. There were a lot of new brands. I haven't done full checks on them either. Whilst Hans and Barrett says like the products they have in store are cruelty free, I think it's really important to remember that cruelty free is like not a strict definition. There are like different levels to it. Honda Barrett would be looking at brands which say they're cruelty free at like brand level. So that brand won't sell in China, for example. They won't test on animals themselves either. But like maybe the parent company does. Like for example, they have Ren in there and Ren themselves are cruelty free, but then Unilever tests on animals. I haven't had a chance to check all of these brands which are new to me yet. They had a brand called Meg's Menopause and it was just a range of products created for women going through their menopause basically. So I thought that was interesting. It's not something that I'd find helpful i'm not going through menopause but if you are that might be a brand to check out they had a organic korean skincare brand in there which also used braille on their packaging so it was accessible for blind people to be able to read what the products were so they're called wemissa i didn't pick up any of their products most because they were very expensive and i didn't find anything particularly appealing definitely one to check out if you're into your korean skincare and then there was the hannah silito brand which I was very drawn to mostly because I really like the look of the products I thought they'd look really nice oh they also had Inica and PHB um, cosmetics in there so when it comes to like makeup you will then have those options typically I find green brands don't have a broad enough shade range to make me want to buy from them but yeah they have Inica and they have PHB in there I don't think their shade ranges are particularly good and they could do better but just letting you know if you're into your organic beauty and green 
makeup. They had the biggest like toothpaste display ever with stuff like Jason's, Eco Denta, Kingfisher, a lot of toothpaste. They also had like huge deodorant stand as well. They had a lot of deodorants in there. There were flux undies, there were menstrual cups. They had a lot of period stuff. What else? They had the Vita Skin range. They had all the vitamin C stuff. They had all the vitamin A stuff and that was all 25% off. They had a section for like baby skincare as well. They had brands like Child's Farm in there. They had Walida in there. Then they had Atik in there. They had Faith in Nature. They were both offering like plastic free products. They had Afrocentrics in there. That is a black owned beauty brand which I only discovered recently. Unfortunately, they did only have two of their products. I'd like to see a bigger offering in store of theirs. Yeah, they had a lot of cool foods. They had a big chocolate range. I obviously got my raw chocolate. They had a brand in there called Clear Skin Days who looked really interesting as well. And I kind of want to look up a bit more on that because they looked really nice. They looked very simple, similar to The Ordinary and to Q&A. They just looked like they were focusing on simple skincare without breaking the bank. But yeah, that was me going for my slideshow. Let me know if you'd like to see more about Holland & Barrett. I am a big fan of Holland & Barrett. I've been vegan for 13 years. And when I first went vegan, they were the store for catering for me. Like we didn't have fake meats everywhere. I went in there and I relied on them for so much and it's been great seeing them grow and grow. Obviously they do like a lot of different health stuff. They're not 100% vegan either as far as the retailer goes, but they do do a lot in the way of sustainability and for catering for vegans as well. I've always just enjoyed having them on the high street and having a place where you can expect to find very vegan friendly brands basically. So let me know if there's any other sort of like Hondon Barrett themed stuff you'd ever like to see me do because I'm a fan. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. It really does help me out a lot. Yeah, oh, I'm glad I filmed this now. I've been procrastinating so badly on this, so I'm glad we've gotten through it. Let me know down below what your favorite Hans and Barrett products are. Okay, yeah, no, I am signing off. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, bye.